We have a test tomorrow on chapter two. Let's actually go to the beginning of the packet so I can show you what um, you can expect to see on the test tomorrow. So let's start with page one. The test is on chapter two, what we've done so far. So it's basically this whole packet. There's a couple things we skipped, but I do wanna make sure you at least are aware of what's going to be on there. I did make the test. It is 20, or it's not a test. It's technically a quiz. I normally do a test now because if you haven't noticed, we're just about done with this packet. Uh, and uh, I normally do a test right now. And then we start chapter two, part two, which we're gonna start soon. But I decided not to make it a full blown test and just a quiz. Uh, so, cause we didn't do any quizzes this chapter. So I wanted to kind of ease you into what you're gonna expect to know for this chapter. So we're going to start here. Yes, there are questions about the Earth's shape on the quiz tomorrow. Uh, there is no questions about the evidence. So you do just need to make sure you understand what shape the Earth is. By the way, what is the shape of the Earth without even reading it? Sphere. It's not a sphere. It's an oval sphere thing. You did this the day I was out last week. It's called an oblate spheroid, which is an oval thingy. The key with the shape of the earth is that it's fatter than it is tall. Um, so it's not a perfect sphere. And that's due to the earth spinning. This motion of the earth spinning, much like when you take a ball of pizza dough and you toss it in the air, when they're making pizza, do they just throw it in the air? To make the pizza, what do they do? They throw it and spin it. So that spinning is what takes a ball of dough and makes it out into that pizza shape you're more familiar with. Now, yes, a pizza is way fatter than it is tall, right? Now, luckily, the earth isn't made out of pizza dough and we're not gonna look like a pizza, but it is kind of doing that same exact thing where it's getting a little shorter and a little wider. It's so insignificant that from with your, without like actually taking precise measurements, you wouldn't look at the globe and say that it's shorter than it is fatter. But if you did, if you were able to get like a big tape measure and put it around the earth, it would be fatter than it is tall. So it's officially an oblate spheroid. The next stuff on the bottom of page one, which was um, talking about the lithosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. Really, it was going back to this bottom chart on page one. There are a handful of questions on that. So I think there was like four questions that you're going to need to be able to pull the information out off of this reference table. One key reminder is what is the crust if you had to replace the word crust with um, words you really understand, what would the crust be? This is actually a question. So the crust is the fancy word. What could we call it? That's even fancier. Now you're not wrong. The, cru the crust is the lithosphere or part of the lithosphere. But if you wanted to simplify it and tell um, a kindergartner what the crust is, what is the crust made out of? Rocks. rocks, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, so the crust is made out of rocks. What's the hydrosphere made out of? Water. Water. And then the troposphere is a layer of the atmosphere, which is made out of air. air. That's the basics that if you remember that, you'll at least be on your way to getting any questions about this correct. And then just don't forget to use your reference table. So that is the first page. The second page. We never did this second page. And I decided this year that I am not teaching this second page until later in the year. So you can completely cross that page two off. So we, this will not be on the quiz. It will not be on a test until later this year. If you're wondering, well, how should I get ready for the test? One thing I recommend doing is looking at some of the questions I asked and covering up the answers and see if you are able to answer them correctly now that they we've gone over them and we've taught it and you, you should, in theory, be able to get 100 on this homework again. So that's one thing I would do for pages three and four. Those were questions about the front page of your reference table. Yes, that is on the quiz. 
And then the rest of the packet's basically latitude and longitude. So there's basic questions uh, such as, what's the latitude of the equator? That's a question. What's the latitude of the equator? Zero. Zero. Um, what's the latitude of the North and South Poles? It is 90. So Remy had that off the top of his head. Do the rest of you? You need to know that the latitude of the North and then the South Pole is 90 North and 90 South. That will be on the test tomorrow or quiz. So that basic stuff about latitude and longitude will be on there. But then we did go into more detail doing the minutes of latitude and longitude. And there is one question regarding minutes. Um, so you do need to make sure you understood how to do the minutes with latitude and longitude. Um, page 11, 12, and 13 were practice doing the minutes. We didn't do them. I'm not going to make you do them. They're a little bit overkill for the amount of, of times you actually have to do uh, minutes. So we're not doing, in case you wanted to cross those off, 11, 12 is a blank sheet of paper, and 13 we're not doing. 14 and 15 were your homework last night. This is absolutely on the quiz tomorrow. A lot of them, like 10 out of the 20, maybe even 12 out of the 20 are making sure you're comfortable using latitude and longitude. And I should take that. So there are 10 to 15 questions on just latitude, longitude, and time zone stuff. And then you'll see that that's the end of this packet. I did not put any of these. I did not put any landscape features on the quiz today, tomorrow. So with that being said, let's make sure you were able to do pages 14 and 15. They're perfect examples of what to expect on the quiz, then the test, and then the regions. So this is real regions questions about latitude and longitude. It's not as simple as just saying, what is the latitude of Binghamton, New York, or something like that? Mrs. Ritz. Uh, he's not here. Okay. Yep, bye. All right, um, so let's start right off the bat. Now, what is my number one rule of earth science? Read all directions. Read not just directions, guys, everything. So this, yes, I guess this is what you're probably calling directions. And I'm sure if you read this, you're like, okay, I knew that, I didn't really need to read them. And sometimes that's the case. All this told you is to use this picture for questions one, two, and three. I guess it's probably important because if, if you didn't realize this was the picture you needed, you would not have known how to answer questions one, two, and three without knowing that that's the picture you use. So even though you may not have needed that reading, it didn't kill you. Then part of doing, when I say read all the words, it's looking at the picture and reading the picture. I know you don't really read pictures, but I think you know what I mean. Trying to figure out what the picture is showing you. So here you can see we have a globe. There's letters A, B, C, D, and E's down here. One thing I want to point out is the prime meridian is off to the side over here, similar to the way it is on our reference table. So it's off to the side, not going down the dead smack center. Just keep that in mind. All right, question one, latitude and longitude of location A. I would like to see a show of fingers. What answer did you pick? Don't look at your neighbors. It doesn't matter what they put down. Show me your answer to question one on page 14, please. Don't look at your neighbors. Throw them up now. Go. I'm seeing some ones, some twos, some threes, maybe a four. Okay, so looks like we might need to go over this one. So this is absolutely on the test today or tomorrow, knowing latitude and longitude. And it wants to know the approximate latitude and longitude of A. First of all, what goes first, latitude or longitude? Latitudes first, they're alphabetical. And then my next question is latitude, which way is latitude on the map? Horizontal, the flat ones. So yes, east to west, I just don't like to talk about it. So we're doing location A. So as I always do, I start off at the equator. 
then I decide do I have to go north or south to get to location A? There's location A. I have to go up the map, which is north. Here's what I like to do. I cross off answers before I keep going. Which one can I get rid of? Four. Why? South. That one says south. The answer is definitely not four. So then I look at my answers. And did I go 105 or 25 north? Wait, one of those is wrong. Which one is absolutely wrong? We already did four, but there's another one. Why is one absolutely wrong? It can never be the answer. The North Pole is 90. There is no such thing as 105 North. I have barely done any work and I'm already down to two possible choices. At least now, if I had to guess, I have a 50-50 chance. But I already know the latitude must be 25 North. By the way, I'd like to double check that. Between zero and 30, okay? 25 works. Let's keep going. So the longitude, I only have two choices, 105 East or 105 West. How do we figure out if it's East or West? Left or right of the prime meridian. So really East or West of the prime meridian, but here's the prime meridian. Remember, it still works the same way. Never eat. Doggy waffles. So this way of the prime meridian is east. This way is west. So are we east or west for location A? West. west. Does 105 make sense? Yeah, between 90 and 120. So the answer is number two. Um, can I just show you? Yeah, I didn't actually do that on this. I must have on one point on my answer. Oh, yeah, I did. Here's, that was my answer key. That was what I did last period. Here is my answer key that I made a couple years ago, I think. Guys, I, I did that. I did the crossing offs. If I'm doing it, and this is literally my job, and I've done this for years, if I'm crossing off wrong answers, I really think you should be too. So especially with regions questions, when they're multiple choice, use those other answers to help you out. Um, it'll at least narrow down some choices. I mean, we barely had to do any thinking once we narrowed down our choices. All right, moving on. What do locations A, B, and E have in common? And I know I've covered up some of my answers, but there's A, B, and E. A, B, and E, just by looking at them, what do you say they have in common without even looking at the answers? They are all West, okay? What else are they all? Same longitude. That was the first thing I noticed. They're the same longitude. So I'm like, oh, that's the answer. Not even a choice. And that's the kind of stuff why I like to look at the answers because if I just go with my gut, it might not even be on there. It's not wrong. They are all the same lab longitude, but that's not where they're going with this. So I look, are they all the same latitude? Nope, because latitude's going across. They are not the same latitude. But do you notice how they put that first? Just in case you got latitude and longitude confused or you knew it was longitude, but since it wasn't an answer, you, you kind of tried to convince yourself maybe I was wrong. That's why they put that there first to mess with you. Um, so are they the same season, same local time, or have the same prevailing wind direction? What did we learn about the same longitude? Same longitude, same time. So that's all you had to remember. Now, I know we haven't talked about seasons yet, and I know we haven't talked about wind patterns yet, but we have talked about same longitude, same time. So that's why you can safely choose that one. How about number three? I'm also curious, A, B, C, or D. Which one did you say was New York State? Give me a one for A, two for B. What'd you say? Answer to number three, please. Don't look at your neighbors and tell me. I'm seeing a one, I'm seeing some threes, seeing a two. Okay, so one, two, or three. I didn't see any fours. 
All right, let's take a look at this. Um, how do you guess? How did you do this? What did you base your answers on? You all had an answer. Did you guess? You just guessed. You're like, which one looks good? Which one did you pick? Okay. Did anybody do anything besides just looking and like asking? Hmm? Nice. And then you looked at this. Hey, you actually used the real latitude and longitude. Some of you have it memorized. Some of you at least know Buffalo's latitude, longitude-ish, but you don't have to. This is when you you just start looking stuff up. If you don't know, start looking it up. Here's one place you could have looked. You can see that New York's latitude goes from around 40-ish up to 45. Our longitude goes from 73 over to 79. So we're looking for a place that has a latitude in the 40s and a longitude in the 70s. So we look at A. Is A a, a latitude in the 40s? Nope, it's between zero and 30. A is not New York State. We look at B, C, and D. B and C, are they in the 40s? They're between 30 and 60. But D is at 60. That's not the longitude of New York State. So the answer is either 2B or C. So number two or three. We basically, they're both the right latitude. Which one's the right longitude? We can see that C is in between, what's that say? I'm sorry, I can't see up there. C is between six. Is that, sorry, that is a 60, 60 and 90, and B is between 90 and 120. Which one does New York State fit in? C, between 60 and 90, or 60 and 80, whatever it actually says, 60 and 90. Okay, you really got to do all that work. You have to look at your reference table, then you have to compare it to here. Uh, question four, so now we're done with this picture and we're talking about a person traveling due west across New York State, the altitude of Polaris will. Two things you have to know on there. First of all, do you know what the phrase due west means? Some, yeah, do you know? Straight west, not northwest, not southwest, but straight west. So basically what it means is somebody hopped in their car and started driving straight west across New York State. And now they're asking you about altitude of Polaris. What the heck does altitude of Polaris have to do with anything? Phoenix, what did we learn about altitude of Polaris? Um, yeah. Forgot, look on page seven. If you forgot, look on page seven right now. If you know it, just wait for everybody else to look. And if you're not looking, I should be able to call on you and you can answer me. It's the center of what? No, no, it's not the center of anything. Look on page seven and see where we talked about the altitude of Polaris. So while he is looking for this, guys, this is what I ex expected you to do. What? Yeah, it just looks like you didn't finish the notes. Might have zoned out. No. Page seven should look. So go back to page seven. Make sure you have the correct notes. You. This is the notes that I wrote on that day. So it looks like you might have missed a few. Finding latitude. Altitude of Polaris equals your latitude. Write that in. And then I abbreviate that ELT equals LAT. So what that means is any time they mention the altitude of Polaris, I want your brain thinking, oh, they're talking about the latitude then. Altitude of Polaris just flat out equals your latitude. So if you see altitude of Polaris, think in your brain, latitude. So going back, they said we were traveling due west. When we travel due west, 
What does that mean? So we're going straight west. But in terms of latitude and longitude, what does that mean if we're going due west? Latitude staying the same, despite the fact that my line's not perfectly straight. When I drew this due west line, it was drawing a latitude line that stayed the same. So if my latitude stays the same, I'm going to try and make see if you got, got the concept now, okay? My latitude staying the same, what do I know about Polaris? So if altitude staying this, if latitude staying the same, what else? Do you, what do you know about Polaris then? Also staying the same. Whatever happens to the latitude help happens to the altitude. Whatever happens to the altitude happens to the latitude. They are equal. So I think hopefully that was the answer. Yes. So as you travel due west, straight latitude. That means altitude stays the same. All right, here's another question about the same concept. Number five, at what latitude would an observer uh, on Earth find the altitude of Polaris to be 37? Sorry to pick on you, Phoenix, but this one's for you too. If the altitude of Polaris is 37. Four. What did you just tell me about altitude of Polaris? Always oh, the same. Same thing? Three, three, three. Okay. Right. Yes, but why? The same. Yeah, altitude of Polaris, not it stays the same, it is the same. So whatever the altitude of Polaris is, is your latitude. But wait, there's two 37s up here. Trent, can you want to tell us what's going on here? If you are south of the equator, no, it's not. If you are south of the equator, you cannot see Polaris. So that should not even be a choice. But do you see how mean they were? Do you see that was not a coincidence that they put 37 South first? Because they were hoping you guys just are like, oh, it's 37. Circle the first thing you see. That's what happens when you don't read all the words. You might just see the 37 and circle the 37 without looking at your other choices. So again, just remember, altitude of Polaris equals your latitude. Number six, a person knows their solar time on the prime meridian, and they know their local solar time. So we're talking about time. Time has to do with what? Longitude. Does one answer talk about longitude? Yeah. If we know about our time, we know about the longitude. I just don't, okay, I, I'm taking on you because I think you can take it. Can you take it? Okay. And you're going to understand this concept by the time you walk out the door, okay? All right. This one is a little trickier, though. So it says an observer measured the altitude of Polaris to be 41. So Phoenix, since the altitude of Polaris is 41, what do we know about that? Don't look at the answers. If the altitude of Polaris is 41, what do we know? Yeah. What's the same? Um, altitude and? Uh, no, altitude of Polaris and your, it's not up there. Stop looking, it's not there. Oh, wow. Altitude of Polaris equals? So that's why I abbreviated it. Alt equals lat. So those are the same letters. Alt, A-L-T, L-A-T. So we know that this person must be standing on what latitude line then, Phoenix? So if they saw Polaris is 41 in the sky, what latitude are they standing on? Altitude of Polaris is 41. So what's their latitude? 41. 41. They give me names. They don't give me numbers this time. So what do I do with this information? If I know the latitude is 41, what do I do with that information? We'll read the rest of the question. It says, what city? So look on a map. Luckily, I give you a map. You have this map. So if you did not use your reference table, you had to. Because you can't just estimate. Everywhere in New York State is around 40-something. But you have to give me an actual name. So you could do a process of elimination. You could say, OK, answer A was. 
Watertown. No. No. Answer B. Messina. No. Buffalo. No. New York City. Yeah, it's really close to 41. All right, I'm going to give Phoenix a chance to have a break, but I want you thinking of this. So I'm going to ask somebody else, Phoenix, but I want you answering in your head. Okay. What is the latitude of the observer shown in the diagram? Can I see some show of hands first? See if we're on number eight. What'd you say? We hated this question, so I'm not even going to ask you the answers. Let's, you, you did. <laughs> I, and that's why I'm like, oh, he's cheap. All right. First of all, what do we need to know? To figure out their latitude? We know that altitude of Polaris equals your latitude. So hopefully this picture talks about Polaris. So we've got a creepy looking eye here. What does this thing look like? It should look like a protractor, you know, for math. And what are protractors for? Measuring angles and getting degrees, absolutely. Now, it's just an upside down protractor. You're used to looking at them this way with zero being here, 90 being here. It's just upside down and on an angle. So this is, um, we're just gonna read it slightly different. So here is to the horizon. So remember the altitude of Polaris means how high it is in the sky. So if this is the ground and here's where they're looking to see Polaris, there's the angle we're looking for. So we're really just asking, how big is this angle? So we're just really asking, how big is this angle? Let's do process of elimination. Which one is it definitely not? Not four. First of all, is there a latitude of 125 degrees north? In your imagination, yeah, there is none. Because what's the la highest latitude? 90. 90. Oh, that's an answer. Is this a 90 degree angle though? No. That would mean they were standing on the North Pole and they'd have to look straight up to see Polaris. So we're left with two, either 35 or 55. You can do it one of two ways. You could legit count. And you could see that there's 10, 20, 30, 35. Or you can see if this is a 90, like if that's a 90 degree angle, is that bigger or smaller than 45? Should be smaller than 45. So you could either count 10, 20, 35, or see that that's smaller than 45. Either one would work. No? You're just making faces for something else? Yes, so I was on, you could count the whole ones, 10, 20, 30, and then there was a half of one. That's what I was doing. Oh boy. A moving ship notices the altitude of Polaris increases every night. What does it mean that the altitude of Polaris increases every night? Goes up. So what way on the globe are they going if Polaris is getting higher? North. And this is not on there. This is review from chapter one. Which one of these can be predicted accurately from day to day? Do you know? Or it is the altitude of the noontime sun. You may not have actually known that until we learn about it later in the year. Ship crosses the prime meridian and the altitude of Polaris is 65. What is the latitude of, or what is the ship's location? Now, normally we have to do latitude first, longitude second. Notice they actually labeled them. So that's why it's okay sometimes to go out of order as long as you label them. So if we're at the prime meridian, what should the longitude be? No, no. Prime meridian, what's the longitude? Zero. So we want one that says zero longitude, not 65 west, not 65 east longitude. Now it's wrong to put that longitude first, but like I said, they labeled it. So that's why it's acceptable. 
Um, so we know that it's either one or two. So since they see Polaris at 65, that's where the 65 comes in. Is it north or south? North, you can't see Polaris in the Southern hemisphere. Zerver measures the altitude of Polaris and finds it to be zero. Hey, Phoenix, altitude of Polaris is zero. What else do you know? The latitude is zero. See, I knew it would work. So now we know the latitude is zero, but what the heck they don't tell them. That's not the answers, they've got words. Who's got a latitude of zero? That's the equator, good. I wanna talk about this Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle real quick. I never brought it up, but I wanna show you that this is page four of your reference table. We didn't use this map too much yet, but they do have these labels over here. So they do have the Arctic Circle at 65, or 66 and a half degrees north. They have the Tropic of Cancer, it's 23 and a half degrees north. They do label the equator, but they don't tell you it's zero. They actually, they do, they go over here at zero. Yeah. So, right. So remember how I said it's not really super accurate, but I'll allow it. You just need to be able to read it the other way. And um, so it has its place and you just need to be comfortable using both or at least reading both. Okay, good question. Um, so these are here in case you don't know them. What's not on here is the North and South Pole. So again, like I said at the beginning of class, what's the latitude of the North and South Pole? 90, you just have to remember that. Next one wants to know which one of these drawings is correct. Which one'd you pick? Show me on your fingers, please. Oh, don't look at your neighbors. <laughs> oh, sorry, you didn't get that far. Number one. Um. Which reference line passes through both the North Pole and the South Pole? We can actually look at this map. Here's North Pole, here's South Pole. Is it zero degrees latitude that goes here? Does that go through North and South Pole? No. Zero degrees longitude, that's right here. Does that go through? Yeah, it does. And again, Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, they don't go anywhere near the North or South Pole. Um, located on the same meridian, they have the same time. Yep, same longitude, same time. Hopefully when you did the latitude, then the longitude, you do the latitude first. You see it's in between 10 and 20 south. So that would, wait, ah, here's the answer, sorry. Between 10 and 20 south. So it's not 15 north, it's not 15 north. Then I have to decide, is it 30 west or 30 east? Here's the prime meridian. Never eat soggy worms. So we're over to the east. What's the location of Binghamton, New York? Do you guys know where Binghamton is off the top of your head? Me neither. Got to use it yeah, that way. Uh, it is. <laughs> You're not wrong. It is that way. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's even that way. Um, no, actually it's, yeah, you're right. It is, but I wouldn't have known that. Um, why do you know that? Cause I thought just that smart. Yeah. My one brain cell kicked in. Good. Good. Did it tell you the latitude and longitude of it? Yeah. Then you're nuts. <laughs> um, use your map. Here's Binghamton and you can use the answers. The answers start with either 4206 North or 4254 North. So here's the 42 line. Here's the 43 line. Remember, it's like a number line that starts at zero and ends at 60. So would you call that 4206 or 4254? Binghamton right here. That is 06. 54 would be way up here. So it's the 06 one. And same with longitude. So now I can look at the answers. It's either 7555 or 7605. Here's 76, here's 75. So we're in between 75 and 76. So that'll give you 7555. Um, Drake, did this one annoy you too with this protractor or were you okay with this one? Was it just that they were upside down before? Yeah. Okay, so same deal. Here's the ground. Here's where they're looking to see Polaris. 
Here's the altitude. In this case, again, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. That's 40 north. All right, you have a quiz tomorrow. One thing I recommend doing to get ready is we have one more page that we've not done. I'm not requiring page 23 as homework, but page 23 is more practice with latitude and longitude. I will put the answer key to this onto Teams so that you can do it and then check your work. Quiz tomorrow.